Welcome to Rhode Island Heritage Month's first virtual celebration. The Rhode Island Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission has offered a free family-friendly festival for 41 years that has allowed people from all over the state an opportunity to partake in various cultures and traditions through art, dance, and musical performances. During these unprecedented times, we are excited to be able to virtually showcase the rich cultural histories and talents of Rhode Islanders for you today and every Saturday during September. I'm pleased to introduce to you Kobe Dennis, a lifelong community activist and the Diversity and Inclusion Director of the YMCA of Greater Providence as our virtual celebrations host. Kobe, take it away. Thanks, Paul. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Rhode Island Heritage Month's first virtual celebration. As Paul said, Rhode Island's Heritage Festival is a fun-filled day that takes place annually every September, where hundreds of Rhode Islanders come out to travel the world in one day. Due to COVID-19, this year, we decided to bring the festival to you. Each Saturday, we will be showcasing cultural groups, performances, crafts, and even some cooking from around the world. So today, we will start with sharing Native American culture with a video clip provided by the Tamaquag Museum. Rhode Island's only indigenous museum dedicated to sharing their culture, art, and history from a first-person perspective.
comprise the professional and paraprofessional experience dances under the artistic direction of Kanina. The Baliti Dance Company performs a colorful and exciting belly dance show suitable for all ages. The dance company uses traditional Middle Eastern music from Turkey, Armenia, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. This next video clip was provided by the Korean American Association, and it is of Korean drummers performing at the Korean Folk Art Cultural Center in New York.
the help of the Rhode Island Office of Library and Information Services, we were able to connect with local librarians who offered to demonstrate various cultural crafts. All demonstration instruction can be found on the Rhode Island Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission website. Andrea Hutnack and Ellen O'Brien, Children's Librarians of Warwick Public Library, will be celebrating the frescoes of Italy and teaching us how to make a fresco too. Hi everyone, my name is Ellen. And my name is Andrea. And we are from the Warwick Public Library and we're here today to bring you a craft from our Italian culture. We considered teaching you our nonna's meatballs and gravy recipe, but decided instead on fresco painting. So behind us, we've printed a fresco from Italy called Villa de Livia. We chose this as inspiration for our art project. A fresco is a painting technique that's used on walls or ceilings. The artist paints directly onto the wet plaster so that the paint dries into the plaster and actually becomes part of it. These paintings last for thousands of years. Fresco means fresh in Italian. You're painting on fresh plaster. The artists have to work very quickly to apply the paint while the plaster is still wet. Famous Italian fresco artists include Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel were painted in the years 1508 to 1512, which makes them over 500 years old. They still look beautiful today. Next, we're going to show you how to make your own fresco. Here are the materials you will need to make your fresco. We purchased Plaster of Paris Go Create Kit, a lid that you can use as a mold, paper and pencil to sketch your design, scissors to cut the top of the Plaster of Paris off, a container to mix it in with a stick to mix the plaster, a paint palette, your brushes, the water for mixing the plaster, and the paint you'll be using. To start, you're going to take your piece of paper and your pencil and your mold, which in this case is the lid, and trace it to make the template so you'll know how big your fresco will be. Then you're going to practice your design. Next, we take half of the bag of plaster of Paris, pour it into our container, mix it with the water, which amount is recommended on the box and stir it with a spoon or in this case we're using a wooden craft stick. Have your mold ready. Now I'm taking the stick to spread the plaster and make a nice flat surface for painting. While that sets up, I've put paint in my paint palette, chosen my colors, and practiced the sketch. Our sketch from before, while we wait for our plaster to set, if you still have a little time, you may want to add color to your sketch so you're really ready for when you begin painting. When you start your painting, you'll wet your brush, Dip it into the paint and attempt to paint in the plaster. If too much plaster comes off onto your brush, it's still a little bit too wet. So you want it to let it set a little bit longer and then try again. Here are the frescoes that we made. Once it's complete, you're going to let it dry, maybe for a few hours, maybe even overnight, depending how humid it is where you are. You can tell that the colors are a little bit soft because we did the painting on the wet plaster. When it is dry, you're going to gently pop it out of the mold and you have your completed fresco. Thanks, Miss Andrea. Yours is beautiful too. Thank you. Our next dance group, Ilaniki Perifania, Greek Pride of Rhode Island, they have been performing traditional and modern Greek dances from various regions of Greek since 1989. Based out of the Assumption Greek Orthodox Church in Pawtucket, the troupe performs at fairs and festivals throughout southern New England, including their annual Greek festival held every August.
This event would not be possible without support from our sponsors. Here's a quick word from Neighborhood Health of Rhode Island. In neighborhoods all over our state, there are people who need help. People just like you who've been laid off, who filed for unemployment. Family, friends, and neighbors who need health insurance. The people of Neighborhood Health Plan are here for you. Rhode Island has a special enrollment period to help you get coverage now. Call us today to see how we can help. It's why we're here. It's what we do for one another. En todos nuestros vecindarios, hay personas que necesitan ayuda. Personas como usted, que han perdido su empleo y necesitan seguro de salud. Nuestro equipo de Neighborhood Health Plan está aquí para ayudarle. Rhode Island tiene un periodo de inscripción especial. Llámenos hoy. Para eso estamos aquí. Para ayudarnos el uno al otro. We are pleased to have Subhash Chanda, president of India Museum and Heritage Society of Rhode Island, here to tell you more information about their organization. Hello, this is Subhash Chanda from India Museum and Heritage Society. I'm so pleased to learn that we are celebrating a virtual Rhode Island Heritage Festival. Although it's no substitute for the real one, but I'm so proud that it's being done at least, you know, rather than not doing anything. And India Museum Heritage Society is an association of India which has been committed to the propagation of Indian art, culture, and music. At India Museum Heritage Society, we present every year many different artists to encourage the dissemination of Indian art, culture, music, poetry, and different forms and shapes. And we are visited by several different artists who come from India to entertain the Rhode Island audiences here. And we try to perform not only for Indian artists or Indian groups, we try to perform for the wider Rhode Island audience. And we are so proud that we get the blessings of almost all the different kinds of people. And this year, we had once again, a visiting artist from India, Mr. Baldev Sharan Narang, who was the favorite of the founder of India Museum and Heritage Society. And he was the guy who founded our museum. Mr. Kulbushan Chaudhary, popularly known as Bush Chaudhary. It was his dream child, which we are fulfilling as members of India Museum and Heritage Society. I'm so glad that we are able to present Shri Baldev Sharan Narang this year for this virtual celebration. He is, a, he is a singer. He is a classical Indian singer who has established himself in the state of Punjab and all over India. He's known well over, and I was so happy that he came here to perform for us. This particular script we are presenting by him was part of the bigger concert done in Rhode Island under the auspices of India Museum and Heritage Society. And this is going to be a very, very entertaining piece for most of you who watch it and listen to it. Please watch carefully, listen and enjoy yourself. And anytime India Museum Heritage Society, you need anything from us concerning India, please do contact us. We are always there to help in the propagation of Indian art and culture. Next up, the Indian Museum and Heritage Society of Rhode Island presents a performance from Baldev Sharan Narang, renowned classical singer of North India, accompanied by Mr. Nitin Mitter, a well-known tabla player of the United States located in New England. Oh, <laughs> 
Last year, we collaborated with Phyllis McHale and William LaPera to put on Rhode Island Heritage's first multicultural fashion show. They have been organizing epic fashion shows for over 10 years for Shea High School in Pawtucket. Many attendees and participants told us that the multicultural fashion show was the highlight of last year's festival. We hope you enjoy this show.
These are unprecedented times, challenging how the YMCA works to strengthen community as we have for nearly 170 years. But we've always found ways to help people and communities in times of crisis. Right now, Ys across the country are providing emergency childcare, shelter, food programs, and outreach to seniors, but we can't do it alone. Whether you're connected to the Y or have a fond Y memory, we need you to stay with us. Reach out to your local Y today and stay with us for a better us. Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong, is a Chinese spiritual meditation practice founded by Mr. Li Hangzi that is good for your health, mind, and body. It is not a religion, although many people in the United States mistakenly consider it as such. Its teachings are the principles of truth, compassion, and tolerance, which help practitioners improve themselves from the inside out. Falun Dafa will now teach us how to make a lotus flower using origami.
Thanks for joining us today, and we hope that you will come back next week. We'll be learning more about the diverse cultures of our fellow Rhode Islanders. There will be dance and musical performances, educational information, and we will learn how to make delicious arepas, venezolones, and there will be something for everyone to enjoy. We hope to see you back here next week on our Zoom.